Welcome everybody to The Shortlist. My name is Johnny Campbell, I'm your host and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Social Talent. If it was your first time to The Shortlist, you're very welcome. If not, well, welcome back. It's episode number 64. We've got an exciting show for you today, one of our special summer series. It's episode 64 of The Shortlist. And this week we're gonna be focusing on onboarding in a virtual world. Earlier this year, we had the pleasure of hosting a, a Social Talent Live panel and with a panel of experts from around the world talking about onboarding, how it's changed post-pandemic, the importance of it and its connection to, I guess, employee engagement. And this week we're gonna be broadcasting a talk from that from Anjana Sridevi, who is the Global Onboarding Design and Delivery Lead at IBM. And her group are responsible for helping onboard over 40,000 professionals every single year. So she knows a little bit about onboarding. But before we do that, let me just give you a bit of context. Um, Welcome, as I said, if you want to find out more about the shortlist and find out more about our shows, what we've discussed in the past, what we're discussing in the future, you can go to socialtalent.com forward slash the shortlist. We welcome our live listeners. We broadcast live every Wednesday at UK Ireland time, 4 p.m. If you're listening to us on YouTube or on LinkedIn, you're very welcome. We'd love to get your questions and comments live as we go through the show. If you're listening to our podcast or want to check out our podcast because you don't have enough time to finish the show, we are available on iTunes, or I should say Apple these days, and Spotify and everywhere where you find your good podcasts. And we're available typically every Wednesday evening, our new show drops, and you can check it out and subscribe there. So why talk about onboarding in a virtual world? I recently wrote a blog article on LinkedIn that talked about how um, really, when you're talking about how do you get the most out of your employees, um, how do you get that performance? Really, it's a factor of hiring multiplied by onboarding, multiplied by engagement. That's where you get the kind of productivity and retention of great talent. If you haven't hired successfully, if you haven't onboarded successfully, and if you're not engaging that employee, you will not get the retention. And retention is a burning issue for folks. So let me take middle point of the three factors that I think multiply together to give you a successful, retain, successful employee who you will retain. And it is onboarding. Some facts first on onboarding. Apparently, although we all have some sort of onboarding process in our team, only 12% of employees agree that their company does a good job with, of onboarding. That's pretty poor. So before we launched into our live session a couple of months ago, we asked our audience of a couple of hundred leaders their thoughts on onboarding and we polled them. So for example, we said, does your organization do a good job? Now, only 12% of employees think they do a good job. And it was interesting because we have a mix of it, right? So about 24% said, you know, they incorporate many best practices, continue to refine. 5% say it's very evolved. That's about 30% saying it's brilliant versus the 12% of employees who agree with that. But it was, you know, kind of uh, interesting to note that uh, about 32% said it's in the very early stages. And about the majority, but 39% said it's improved a lot in the last six months, but there's still a lot of room to evolve. So this is definitely a topic most of us can focus or, or need to focus our attention on. But again, going back to the stats, let me give you some more uh, info from our polls of the several hundred people who were on the call. So we asked people, you know, in their opinion, which of the following was the best way for the company to measure onboarding success in the future? And we give them a bunch of options. I'll tell you what came in number two. It was the new higher retention rate, right? The metric, do they stay in the first year, two years, whatever that is. Uh, but the majority would use um, how the employee feels, an NPS score, as the best way for the company to measure onboarding success in the future. So what would that look like going forward? That was the end of the show. So there's a hint as to what you'll learn from Angela in her presentation here around what the employee feels and focusing on the feeling. We also asked folks, um, what's the ideal amount of time to, to expect to spend virtually onboarding uh, an employee? And you know, stunningly, uh, we had 6% say a week. If you can finish an onboarding in a week, good luck to you. Uh, we had a bunch of others said we could do it in 30 days. About a quarter of the respondents, 26% said we could do it in 30 days. But the majority were saying 90 days, about 39%. And 23% uh, said six months. In fact, 6% said it could take a whole year. Uh, data shows it takes six to 12 months. All right, so anything less than six, you're just deluding yourself. To really onboard somebody typically takes up to six months. But shortening that is so valuable. So what's the most important thing to focus on with virtual onboarding? So we gave the options of clear communication, empathy, structure, and technology. What came out tops? It was clear communication. It's about focusing on clear communication when somebody's joining. And what do we think the biggest obstacle to onboarding is? 
uh, to onboarding new, new hires virtually and uh, the number one thing that came out was ensuring they're being exposed to the team socially followed close behind by ensuring alignment with the rest of the team and company goals and finally uh, we asked folks you know what is the primary way their company was measuring onboarding success today half half the number one response was retention of information did they retain the information sorry tell a lie half said we don't have any measurement none johnny we don't measure this stuff it's so important we don't even measure it but of those who did measure it the majority said how the employee feels was the most important way and by the end everyone agreed that was the major way that we were going to measure so to see why you know 50 percent who said we've no measurement and we're not sure what to measure all moved to uh, saying we should measure by how the company how the employee feels what their mps scores i'm going to hand you back over to angina uh, from ibm and she's going to tell the story of angina's learning in ibm and how they developed and evolved their virtual onboarding process to really come up to post-pandemic standards um, so as I said, my, my name is um, Anjana and uh, I'm part of the talent acquisition uh, team at IBM and um, I'm responsible for uh, the design and delivery of onboarding um, at, 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 at IBM. Uh, let me start with this quote and, uh, and a story. Um, I think that will uh, you know, give us probably an overview of what I want to cover. Uh, back in 2019, I was uh, tasked um, with a group of team members from IBM to reimagine the onboarding experience that we were running at IBM at that point in time. Um, we were I think, 10, 12 of us uh, from different parts of the world, all subject matter experts from in, in their respective areas. Uh, we all got together in a room, you know, with Sikis and somewhere in Boston in a meeting room. And we're all trying to design this, this uh, you know, best, onboarding process or program that, that we can create for IBM. And, you know, halfway through that process, um, you know, our then leader asked us this question, okay, take me through the design of, of what you're creating. And we all stopped for a second, design, uh, you know, we are creating a program, we're creating, um, you know, a, a, a process. And where is design coming in that, right? And for us, it's, you know, design is, is more with, with product. Um, you know, many conversations uh, back and forth. And I think that's really when we start to look at onboarding um, from a designer's lens, right? I mean, what does is, what is a good onboarding design look like? And this quote that resonates really well with every IBMer. Um, this is from our, uh, you know, Thomas Watson Jr., who is our second uh, vice president uh, of IBM. And this is in, in every IBMer's DNA that a good design is, is good business. And I think it's it's pretty much the same when it comes to onboarding experience as well, that having a good design is, is really important for you to, to create that experience. And that's really what we used when we were creating our onboarding experience way back in, in, in 2019. We applied um, design thinking practices and agile methodologies as we were creating that experience. And our focus really was to create an experience that will drive better human-centered outcomes at any scale. Um, and, you know, a guiding principle, so to say, where um, create an experience that is focused on the uh, user outcomes. Who are we designing for? And what exactly is the need of that user? And we had to constantly remind ourselves throughout that process that you are not the user. Uh, so don't just say, I think this is going to work, but we really have to say, what is the user looking for? What do they need? And really create an experience or create a design that is focused clearly on what the user is looking for. And then second is restless reinvention. Responding, the, the, the design should be created in a way that it can respond to the changing needs through rapid prototyping and iteration. Um, and the pandemic was a really good example of us having to you know, rapidly change and iterate the experience that we had created. And then diverse and empowered teams. Do you have the right mix of makers? Um, I think everybody here would agree with me uh, that it takes an army of people uh, to, to make sure an onboarding experience is, is seamless and successful. And depending on the size of the company, it could even be hundreds of people. Um, for example, in IBM, uh, you know, we have hundreds of stakeholders involved in making sure that you know uh, the onboarding experience that we offer to a new hire is, 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 is successful and seamless. And it's really important that we have the right mix of people who's involved in creating that experience. 
And let me talk a little bit about how, uh, you know, we look at onboarding in, in IBM. In IBM, you are an IBMer the moment you say yes to an IBM offer. So for the IBM new hires, day one is not really the first day. It's really a celebration of a journey that's already began when they said yes to an IBM offer. So from the moment they accept an IBM offer, our new hires are immersed in a personalized onboarding experience that is you know, tailored to their location, uh, their role, their skill set, um, and the level of experience that they have. Um, so the way we look at it is that they are engaged from the time they accept an offer so there is no real need to break the ice when it comes to their first day. Uh, the new hires are immediately connected with their manager, their team, uh, uh, when they accept the offer that we don't have to look at day one to cre you know, create that connect or break the ice. And instead of them feeling anxious on their start date or unsure of what to expect, um, our IBMers or, or, or the new hires on their first day are enthusiastic, they're confident, uh, they're connected, and they are well informed. Uh, that's that's really the design of the the experience that that we have at IBM. Now let me tell you a little bit about the experience that uh, that we had say before the pandemic, because um, there's there's a version that's after the the pandemic hit us. Um, the experience uh, we call it a started IBM. Uh, this was implemented in in 2019, and this uh, the 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 focus was heavily on digitizing the experience. Um, keeping it personalized at the same time, with the goal of jump-starting their careers even before their start date. So as I mentioned, you know, the, the experience starts at the time they accept the offer. So we have the time from the time somebody made a decision to join the organization till their start date. And we, we leverage that time to complete some of the things that otherwise uh, was done on either day one or after day one. So which really allows us to save time and help, uh, you know, in our hires becoming ready to work or being productive much sooner. And some of the strategic outcomes that we were, um, you know, that we had with the, with the design of Started IBM was improved personalized experiences. Um, anytime that you create an experience that, that, you know, focused on digital, I think the immediate assumption is that, you know, a digital experience cannot be personal. And that's not the truth. I mean, we can really make it uh, personal and, and tailored at the same time, uh, even when it is, it, it's digital. And that was uh, clearly something that we focused on when we designed Started IBM. Um, and increased productivity and, and retention, um, you know, and, and this was one of the poll questions, you know, how do you really measure, uh, you know, do you really want to associate this also with retention? Uh, can a good onboarding experience help uh, the organization retain their employees? and um, our increased business requirement to have people come and, and start, say, the very next day at a, at a client side. So is our onboarding experience designed in a way that it can meet the business requirement, which could be increased productivity. And retention, of course, is something which is really critical. And increased en engagement and clarity as well for the, for the, for the new hires. It's really important that um, engagement is, is, is key. Uh, and the hires, uh, you know, especially when you're operating in a digital environment, that the that the new hires are engaged, and they have the clarity uh, that they need, uh, you know, throughout the the the, the experience um, of onboarding. Okay, uh, now let me tell you what happened with the, the with the pandemic. Now, as you could see in the previous slide, we were betting heavily on the digital uh, experience to offer that. Uh, you know, outstanding onboarding experience, so to say. It was working very well for us. You know, we had really good new hire feedback, really good feedback from the hiring managers. And then came the pandemic, um, you know, quite unexpectedly in some locations. And we had to adapt and, and change really quickly, um, you know, in, in some locations. And there are, there are some uh, sites where we had to change everything in a matter of days. And I'm sure you know most of you uh, who probably worked in moving to a virtual environment or moving to a remote setup during the pandemic would have experienced something similar. In the middle of all of these virtualizations, it can be easy to forget, uh, you know, what makes us all human, and that's really the feelings. Um, how can we make the experience virtual, uh, you know, off-page remote, but also make it personal? 
um, and also consider the, the emotions of the hires at the same time. Um, how can we support um, our new hires emotions during, a, during a, you know, a, a difficult time such as the pandemic? Joining an organization as such could be you know, anxious or, or you know, nerve wracking for some, for some people, but joining at the time of a pandemic when you have no clarity of what's going to happen, things are changing rapidly, that could add to the anxiety. So as we started working to solve the logistics of uh, you know, remote onboarding and how do we uh, you know, respond to COVID, empathy and personalization became the focus areas uh, that had to be spread across the end to an experience that, um, that we were designing. So these were the two key focus areas that, um, you know, that were our focus um, as, as we were, you know, responding to COVID. Um, our onboarding transformation uh, during the pandemic, I think the best way to describe, you know, that is empathy-based onboarding model. And, and I'm sharing this directly uh, from one of the case studies that Gartner published in, in February, which was uh, covering the, the experience that, uh, that we did at IBM responding to, to COVID-19. And there were three uh, key focus areas. One was people-centric journey mapping. This was, um, you know, as I said in the beginning, the, the design of having people at the center of everything that we are doing, and then engagement-focused initiatives and personalized and virtual support. And I'm going to quickly show you the article that was published in, in Gartner, uh, and we'll share the link with you so you can take a look at that later. And this covers in detail about everything that we've done during this time. But I want to focus on a couple of areas. Uh, one is, you know, like I said, people-centered journey mapping. Keeping the new hire perspective at the center of everything that we were designing, and be it the experience that we had to change, be it the processes that we had to, uh, you know, amend, or any of the technology uh, gaps that we had or any technology that we were introducing, how is this uh, technology enabling us to, to move through the end-to-end -end journey seamlessly? Uh, with regards to the experience, in the absence of a live interaction, does the new hire feel integrated uh, into the community? Do they, uh, do they still feel that sense of community? Uh, do they still feel connected with the organization? That's something that we focused on. The process, uh, you know, we can't eliminate the process uh, side of things. You know, you have to complete your paperwork, you have to get your machine, you need to get an email ID configured. That is really essential to the, you know, to, to, the, to the whole experience as well. Um, are the process steps easy? Um, is it relatively uh, quick enough for the hires to move through? That's something we again started to think from a from a new hires perspective, right? I mean, we have this great process, but does it really work? Uh, in the in the setup that we are operating in currently, with all of the challenges that people were facing, and there were, you know, so many challenges. People did not have network. Some people could not get to, you know, our, our technology solution. So there were many many challenges that that were that were there. And then, um, of course, the the engagement focus initiatives, right? Prioritizing the engagement by establishing, um, and we did a few things in this area. Um, culture based network, um, because our, our experience Experience is, is global, and we have country and, and, and geo-specific adaptations. But during this time, we really looked at creating culture-based network. Um, we also looked at creating empathetic messages. We also started tracking new hires, emotional experience. And, and this was an area I think we spent quite a bit of time on in terms of reinventing. Um, we changed our complete communications. We changed the way we ask um, questions in our survey. Um, and I think our survey question started with, you know, how are you feeling? Um, you know, are you, uh, do you feel okay? Uh, are you anxious? You know, is there anything that we can help with? And then of course we asked, you know, more specific questions about, you know, did you get your machine or, you know, how, how do you feel about the support that you received? But the, the first change that we made really was asking them, how are you feeling? You know, um, and, and what can we do to help? And then of course, you know, the, the personalized virtual uh, support. And this is not just for the, the new hire, but also for the hiring managers. Um, we actually looked at what are some of the moments where there could be uh, you know, a challenge that, we, uh, that, that the new hire or the manager may be facing. And we identified three key areas. Uh, moment of emotion, uh, where you know, the hire or manager is most likely to experience awkwardness or discomfort. And there could be moments of uncertainty where you know, 
people are most likely to be unsure about the process and there is a certain amount of uncertainty and people are you know scared to ask a question they don't know where to ask who to ask um, and then there's moments of change um, you know where the higher or managers uh, they're most likely to experience uh, a continuous change to the process so we really identified what are some of these key moments and really try to solution them again keeping the user in mind and and seeing what what exactly is 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 the user looking for um and more details are there in the uh, in, in the in the in the case study that Gartner published but let me quickly touch upon some of the uh, changes that we made during the the pandemic uh communication i think um a communication was really key showing empathy um and and making sure that the intent is to, is to reduce anxiety we didn't want to give them you know a whole lot of instructions and tell them you know just start doing all of these things and then you will be on board but we really wanted to see uh you know to reduce anxiety and 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 tell them that we're here to support and this is a challenging time for everybody right and it, and it, and you're not um in this alone um we created videos um we created uh you know uh, as i mentioned earlier some um cultural uh, networking group who were able to support new hires with some of the communications that we had to make and then we leveraged digital platforms um, you know technology was quite um, important you know when you operate in a virtual setup and um, we used digital platforms to uh, to share information share resources uh, that were rapidly changing uh, you know by country we had hires um who were traveling who could it move between borders so there were many um you know different challenges and scenarios that we had to respond to and we used our digital platforms to be able to um you know timely uh, communicate with with our new hires paperwork um you know everybody know this is really the critical piece of work we made that 100% digital uh making sure that the hires don't have to you know worry about printing something sending something over to us or you know coming to an office and dropping something so made that process completely digital which i think reduced a whole lot of anxiety and that was one of the you know most asked questions from our new hires is well, what's going to happen to my face to work you know how am i going to do this who do i need to you know contact and then network and connect um i think this is a very very critical um that we have uh, the the hires have the the support that they are looking for and during this time uh, we extended the support that we were providing to the, to the new hires um you know before that as well as um after they joined we kept regular connects with the hires the managers in groups one to one making sure that they you know had all of the resources and all of the information that they need um and people were you know really concerned about not coming to an office not being able to meet, meet with their team and and that level of reassurance was really critical and and that's something that we did with our um you know with our slack channels our internal communication channels that that we use so visioning uh, very important uh you know important for people to start uh, working quickly uh making sure people get their laptop making sure you know it is set up configured working um another big big challenge i would say something that we had to constantly iterate and and come up with new ways to manage uh, but that was one of the the other uh, changes that we had to make during the pandemic as well and then welcome session um i know every um, organization will have an orientation session or a welcome session that we offer um and doing this virtually of course is 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 very challenging especially if your session is quite long um our sessions used to be you know four hours long um before the pandemic when then we used to run them during the pandemic of course asking someone to sit for four hours in front of a computer and and listen to uh, you know to one person talking um of course didn't seem uh, like the best idea and that's not really what our new hires wanted as well so we split our sessions into two parts um and and messaged you know what what should go on the first day what should go on the second day made the session very interactive and personal and uh, we also created some custom videos from from IBMers around the world uh really sharing how working from home is for them um uh, you know and making it as real as it can be you know you're working and you know you have your kids running around you have your you know your your pet dog there and you know it's all it, this is all you know part of the work from home setup and we wanted to make it as as real as it is so that the new hires are not anxious and they're not worried about how this is going to work for them Uh, so made it really interactive and personal 
And I think this is one of the things that worked really well and what we were really concerned about, but, uh, but the one that worked very well. In fact, our welcome session satisfaction during the pandemic uh, was more than the one that we had, say, before the pandemic. So I think that was something that was really good for us to know as well. Um, in terms of our uh, results, um, and uh, you know, it was interesting when I looked at the poll that 49% of the uh, you know organizations don't have a measurement. I think it's really important uh, to do measurement to see where we where we stand in terms of the experience that we offer. Um, and at IBM, uh, we measure uh, we we of course uh, use NPS as a measure to understand how uh, like we are our hires uh, you know recommend the experience that we offer. And then we also check um, if their decision to join the organization is reassured. And we ask that question a month um, after their start date. Um, and we, of course, ask them questions around their overall experience of joining the organization. And we do check retention as well. I don't have the numbers here. But just to give you a, a rough estimate, I mean, we onboarded 26,000 hires uh, virtually uh, during the pandemic last year uh, with a net promoter score of 66. And 93% of our new hires reporting that they feel welcomed, uh, you know, by IBM despite the virtual onboarding format and 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 you know being worked uh, remotely. And 95% of our hires felt reassured about their decision to join IBM after their first month. And you know these numbers are not easy to get. Um, I wouldn't say this is how we started, but this is how we we ended the year with. And. Um, so this is what I want to leave you with, right? I mean, reimagining um, the the onboarding experiences is, is, is not um, something that's easy. And I think there are always lessons learned. Even for us at IBM, um, it wasn't a success at the first attempt. Uh, we had to make many iterations. And I think that's, and that's why um, these three are the, are the key lessons that I would say that we learned as we reimagined the, the onboarding experience during the pandemic. Uh, first is fail fast and, and learn and iterate. Very critical and very important. Um, and we had many instances where we failed. Uh, I mentioned about laptops earlier. I think that was one of the areas where we, you know, where we really struggled. The obvious option was ship the laptop to the new highest address and, and that solves it. And we set up a process, started to do it, then we realized, you know, we don't even have shipping contracts in some countries. Uh, some people, you know, moved home. They went back to their hometown, and we didn't even have the right address captured. So, a complete process that you set up did not quite work. So we had to, you know, iterate, come up with a with a new plan. What's going to work? So it is quite possible, and there are many areas you will fail. But it's important that you you learn from it and then iterate and and make sure that you work through that. Second, communicate and partner. Very, very important um, when you are operating uh, remotely that you communicate and you partner. As I said, there are a number of people involved uh, in making this um, you know, a successful experience or a seamless experience for the new hire. Um, the onboarding team or, or HR or, or talent acquisition is the front page. There are several other people uh, who, who are involved in making this a success. So, it's really important that you partner, be it with the hiring manager, be it the person who gets you the laptop, be it you know, the legal team that's looking at it from a compliance perspective. It's really important that we communicate and we partner with each and everyone who's involved uh, because it is, it is um, you know, a group effort, it's a team effort. And last but not the least, don't just build, optimize. It's really important that uh, we don't just build something and, and leave it at that, but we really have to look at optimizing it um, you know, time to time. So I think those are the three key lessons that we learned um, from, from the experience. Um, and that's all that I wanted to share. Angela, thanks for that. I hope you really got some value out of that. It's inspired you to think about your onboarding process and how it's so critical in terms of the engagement of your staff and how it really links to successful hiring. Do join us again next week for episode 65 when I'll be joined by Clark Bowers. Clark Bauer is the Director of Talent Acquisition at World Vision. World Vision is a faith-based nonprofit operating in over 100 countries um, whose mission is really to, uh, to improve the, the lot of, 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 of communities, families, and children uh, to overcome poverty and injustice around the world. 
And World Vision are, uh, have been a customer of Social Talent for many years, and we work with their recruiting team to really upskill them because upskilling the recruitment team in an NGO like World Vision helps save lives, like literally helps save lives and improve uh, the lot of different children and individuals faster in war zones, in, in natural disasters, in lots of different areas. So it's a really, really powerful mission to be supporting. We're proud to support World Vision. But Clark is gonna be talking to us about um, executive hiring in the NGO world and what he's learned. Do, do join us next week. Um, that is gonna be Wednesday at 4 p.m. Irish time. That's 11 a.m. the East Coast of the US and 8 a.m. on the West Coast. Or you can find the podcast when it drops on Wednesday evening on Apple and Spotify. Until then, hope you really enjoyed this show. We'll be back on a regular schedule next week. Thank you.